So the benefit of aftermarket wheels with a lot less backspacing, or even factory wheels with a set of wheel spacers, is that they'll do a great job of pushing bigger and wider tires out further away from the frame rails. Of course, the benefit of that is that they'll help you to clear things like aftermarket suspension components, and to help prevent things like rubbing at a full flex or at a full turn. However, If there is a problem to them, it's that the increased leverage that they create will cause things like your unit bearing and your factory ball joints to wear out prematurely. But really, even that's not that big of a deal, especially if you know how to replace them yourself. Needless to say, that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. Install a set of these heavy duty ball joints made by Synergy. As you can see, they come fully greasable and feature a 100% metal on metal design. In other words, there are no plastic components inside of them, like you would find in a factory set, and that means they'll have a much greater service life. Now, Changing out a set of ball joints is a lot easier than you would think. In fact, for the most part, it can be done with just a good set of basic tools. But there is one thing that you will need, and if I could guess, most of you won't have. Ah. A ball joint press. And I should note that you don't even have to buy one of these, as most parts stores like AutoZone and the like will allow you to rent one of these for free. With that said, a job like this should always be done on a flat and level surface. And because you will be lifting your Jeep up off the ground, it's always a good idea to make sure that your transmission is in park, or if you have a manual, that it's in gear. And of course, to make sure that your emergency brake is fully engaged. Just for good measure, it probably wouldn't even hurt to chalk the rear wheels as well. Now, you've already seen me do it, but the first thing you're gonna need to do is get your front axle up on a set of jack stands and remove your wheels. All right, from here, we can start removing parts, but first, I do need to point out that we have an aftermarket front axle on our JL. And so there will be a few things that are a little bit different than what you would do on a factory axle. However, the differences are minor and Synergy covers what you need to know in their instructions. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove the brake line hold down bracket, which is secured to the axle just behind the lower spring perch. Obviously we're running coilovers, but you can see the spring perch is right here and we're gonna use a 10 millimeter wrench to get that off. All right, now we can go ahead and unhook all the ABS sensor lines from this bracket. And then I'm gonna use a 13 millimeter socket to remove this bolt. Okay, now we can remove the brake caliper and to make that easier, I'm gonna go ahead and push this out, essentially, turn the steering wheel all the way to passenger to give us access to the bolt securing it in place. And then I'm gonna use a 21 millimeter socket to remove the two bolts securing this caliper to the knuckle. Hang it up in place. All right, so now we can go ahead and remove the brake rotor. And in order to do that, I'll be using a Torx T30 bit to remove this retaining bolt. So with the rotor out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and use a five millimeter Allen wrench and remove the bolt securing the ABS sensor in place. Okay, now we can go ahead and carefully pry this up and out. You wanna be very careful with it. 
And we're not going to be able to completely remove it until this dust shield is out of the way. So now using a 10 millimeter socket, I'm going to go ahead and remove the three bolts securing the dust shield in place. As I mentioned earlier, we have an aftermarket front axle and because of it, we don't have an FAD. For those of you with a factory axle, you're gonna to need to refer to the Synergy instructions on how to remove the motor and the collar inside of it. So for our purposes, we're just gonna to jump to the next step and that's to remove the unit bearings. And there are three bolts securing that in place and to get them off, I'll be using a 13 millimeter socket, actually specifically a 12.13 millimeter socket. All right, because we have RCV shafts instead of your traditional U-joint type of shaft that most of you will have, I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple of pry bars and get the orange boot off right now. All right, now that I got the boot off, we can go ahead and take out the axle shaft and we're gonna do it complete with the unit bearing in place. So just kind of jiggle this out. Just try to carefully pull this out. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the old cotter pins. Just bend them back, shove it through. Use some needle nose pliers. All right, with the cotter pins removed, I'm gonna go ahead and use a 22 millimeter socket now to loosen up the castle nuts securing the lower and upper ball joints in place. Just gonna loosen them up, not remove them. All right. So rather than removing the tie rod from the knuckle, I'm just gonna go ahead and strap it up because it's really not necessary to remove, that is. And that way, once the knuckle comes free, this will be supported up in the air somewhat. All right, now for the fun part. So even though I loosened up the castle nuts by quite a bit, you can see that the knuckle is still secured in place. And that's because ball joints are tapered studs and they'll need to be wrung out using something like this, a BFH. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna strike the knuckle and it should ring them out. Now I'm just gonna use a flathead screwdriver and pry off the old boots. Ow. Wipe up some of this grease. Hey. I'm gonna spend some time actually just cleaning up some of this grease here. RCVs leave a big mess. That's a little bit better. All right, time to get the press. Let's see, we're gonna need this, this, more than likely this, and this piece. All right. So we're gonna start with the upper ball joint first, and it's gonna need to be pressed down and through the nut, um, the end forging here. So make sure. Oh yeah, perfect fit. All right, so we're gonna grab these two pieces together, place it on the bottom of the press, 
and slip it up and through. And we're gonna thread this in. Make sure we're positioned well. Okay, with my press all assembled, I'm gonna go ahead and use a 21 millimeter socket and drive it down until the upper ball joint is free from the end forging. There it goes. All right, now for the lower ball joint. Okay, it's always a good idea before doing anything else just to inspect the holes on the end forging to make sure there's no damage or any kind of burrs or mars that would otherwise cause the installation of the new ball joints any problems. Feels clean. This is all good too. All right. Just to make sure that it is clean, I'm gonna take a piece of scotch brice, some brake clean, and give it a once over. Just make sure. Okay. All right, so now it's time to figure out which ball joints we need. As you can see, they look almost identical. In fact, the only difference between these two is that the uppers are ever so slightly taller in length. And also on the bottom, you can see the uppers say UPR and the lowers do say LWR. So we're gonna start with the upper and to help things along, I'm gonna grab this adapter. I believe we're gonna need this for reinstallation and this as well. We'll find out. Okay. So you can see, yep, that's a good fit. Let's take off this castle nut. Now the upper, they don't give you a whole lot of instructions in which direction to point the Zerk other than that it should not be facing the wheel. So I'm gonna actually just point mine to the back. I believe that's how they instruct you to do it on the lower one. So we're gonna get that oriented in place. And then I'm gonna size everything up. That looks like it's a fit. Maybe this one, there you go. Place this on top. We sure could use another set of hands here, huh? Put this up and through. Okay, I think that's good. All right, we should be able to press this in. Okay. Perfect. See, this is nice and flush. Everything is in good. Now for the lowers. So for the lowers, we definitely wanna make sure that this Zerk is pointing out and maybe even towards the middle of the Jeep. So we're gonna scoot that in there, just get it situated. And once again, let's see. Because of the shape of the bottom side of this end forging, we're gonna use this adapter, which you can see has got kind of an angle to it, and that's gonna help compensate for that bottom side. Because when this comes up, we wanna make sure both of them are going up evenly. So I think that might be about right there. 
So I'm going to go ahead and take this, place that on top. Get this threaded in. Just make sure everything's going in nice and evenly. Looks like it. More or less in line. So from here, we're going to make sure that the cotter pin holes are properly oriented. And I'm going to use a small screwdriver to make sure that they are perpendicular to the length of the axle. And just rotate it over. Perfect. Okay, I think I need one of these. Grab these guys here first. I'm going to rotate this knuckle back in place. washer on and then we're going to thread on this castle nut. Perfect. So from here we're going to take our 22 millimeter socket and we're just going to loosely tighten this thing on. No more than 15 foot pounds. I'm just going to thread it on. Make sure everything's oriented on the upper ball joint as well. And let me go grab my torque wrench just in case. So earlier I removed this tapered sleeve that was inside the knuckles from the factory. I'm going to slide it back in to place. There's obviously a flat side that aligns with this side of the knuckle. And then we're going to take a ball peen hammer and we're just going to lightly tap it into place. Now we can thread on the castle nut onto the upper ball joint. Then we're going to take our torque wrench, set it to 55 foot pounds of torque. Okay, so from here, we just want to make sure that. The castle nut lines with that hole, and I should know that you should never back off a nut to make that possible, so we'll go a little bit tighter until those are aligned. Almost. That's good. Now we'll go back to the lower nut. And that's going to be 35 foot-pounds of torque, so I'm going to back this off. 35. Looks like it's lined up. So now we can install the cotter pin. Okay, that looks good. Ball joints are installed. All we need to do from here is reinstall everything back in. First step, it's going to be the axle. You want to be very careful with this so that you don't damage the axle seal as you put it in. So I'm going to go nice and slow. Make sure that the splines engage. You can tell because the unit bearing will sit flush on it. Perfect. So most of the threads 
on these bolts look pretty clean, but just in case, I'm gonna spray them off with some brake clean and a wire brush just to make sure they're nice and good. Then we're gonna apply some red Loctite, high strength thread locker. guy back in. Just loosely. set our torque wrench to 75 foot-pounds of torque. All right. Now to get this guy back on. Slip it up zip time between. We can now reinstall the ABS sensor. Just want to make sure it's clean. Carefully place that in. Use our five millimeter Allen wrench again to tighten it in place. As I did with the unit bearings, I'm going to clean up these caliper bolts. And then I'm going to apply some red thread locker to them. Go ahead and reinstall this guy. And the caliper bolts are going to need 148 foot-pounds of torque. forgot these guys the zerk fittings that need to go on the ball joints I probably should have got these on soon after pressing in the ball joints themselves but I can still do it now so I'm gonna use an eight millimeter socket I'm gonna thread this guy in right now okay all right Everything's in. I think I got everything covered. Um, I should note that the Synergy ball joints do come pre-greased, so no additional grease will be needed at this time. Now for the other side.
last but not least, kind of make sure that these wheels or the lug nuts for them are tightened to the proper foot pound and that's going to be 130 foot pounds. And that, my friends, is all there is to it. We now have a brand new set of Synergy heavy duty ball joints installed on our Jeep JL Wrangler. We hope that this video has been helpful to you.